All right, so before we begin, let's lay the foundation so we know our end goal. In essence, it's gonna be this. The laser beam needs to run perfectly parallel with the axes. And to do that, it's gonna be bounced through three mirrors. Mirror one is located near the output end of the laser tube on the corner of the frame, and it bounces the beam from the laser tube down along the Y axis. Mirror two sits on the end of the X axis gantry and bounces the beam from the Y axis along the X axis. Mirror three sits on top of the laser head and bounces the beam from the X axis down the nozzle in the Z axis direction, where it focuses through a lens and into our workpiece. So I'm gonna double check before I begin that all the things on my frame are square and level to one another, because if they're not, I'm gonna have a really bad time trying to align this laser beam. Starting at the beginning of our laser's path with the laser tube. Now you might notice the tube holders I'm using have no adjustment on them. And that's because I designed this machine so that they're mounted directly to the inner frame, which we just checked for square and level. So that's just one less thing to worry about. So we can actually jump ahead now and start with positioning mirror one. First I'm eyeballing where I think the laser beam will pass through the guide hole, which is that little metal flag with the hole through it. Not all mirror mount assemblies have this feature, and I specifically chose these ones because they did. It just makes the beam alignment that little bit easier. I'll put a bit of masking tape over this guide hole and making sure that I have my laser safety glasses on and checking nobody else is in the Kenny Loggins area and that the postie just doesn't happen to cycle by at this precise moment and that there isn't a flock of low-flying ducks traveling overhead via a low-powered pulse. I'm aiming for the center of the hole and it would be a pure fluke if I hit it first time, but as it is, I'm a little off today. So what I don't want to do now is move the laser tube and aim it. Because I already know that the laser tube is mounted square and level with the rest of the frame, adjusting that now would just mess everything up. So what I want to do is adjust the mirror mount itself to do a better job at catching the beam, in what we're going to refer to in the future as an accuracy cycle. Once I'm happy the beam is hitting the center, I can move on. Your laser tube should emit a beam that's actually a circle. This tube is quite old and sometimes likes to make funny shapes instead, so just ignore that, because you'll only encourage him. To install the first mirror, I remove the threaded ring from the back, place the mirror in, and tighten the ring back down. I'm using gold-coated silicon mirrors. For me, I prefer to just regularly replace the less expensive mirrors, because all mirrors will get worn out eventually anyway. Now I can start messing with the beam angle. I'll move the set screws into the same position to begin. The three gold knobs on the back will adjust the angle the beam leaves the mirror and hits the next target. The one at the top controls the up and down movement. The one on the left controls the side to side movement. The one in the middle controls the diagonal movement but I'm gonna recommend it not to touch that one because like too many chooks in the kitchen, it just makes everything more complicated. I wanna catch the next beam hit on the mirror two guide, so I'll set up a tape target, bearing in mind there's a chance it could miss the target completely. Oh, well, that was underwhelming. Now here's the thing, it doesn't actually matter where on that mirror two target the beam hits at this stage. Let me explain why. Every time we align each section of the beam, we need to run through two cycles. I'm gonna call these alignment and accuracy. In the alignment cycle, what we're doing is making sure the beam is moving absolutely parallel with the axes across its whole length. And we do this by adjusting the angle the beam travels using the knobs on the back of the mirrors. The second cycle, accuracy, is controlled by the position of the mirror mounts themselves and where they need to be to send or receive the beam so that it lands in the center of the mirror. So let's continue and hopefully it'll all make sense as we work through it. The first thing I do is a pulse with the mirror as close as possible. Then I send it further away down the axis and do another pulse. I need to move the beam to the right and up a bit using the knobs we just talked about until I hit close to the first mark again. Then I'm gonna repeat that exact process, this is why I called them cycles, remembering that I don't care where on the tape that beam hits, what I want is a consistent hit down the length of the axis. Once I'm happy I'm hitting the same spot, it means my laser beam is now traveling parallel to the axis, and I can move on to setting the accuracy. 
I have two options at this point. I can either move the receiving mirror or I can move the sending mirror. The most straightforward way would be to move only the receiving mirror like I did back at the very first mirror mount. But because we want the beam to travel a little bit to the left, I can actually do this by moving the sending mirror back towards the laser beam. Now this is risky because moving this mirror will throw out the alignment that I just set, but I want to do this to show you all the possible options. This only works in the side to side direction. To catch the beam higher or lower, I need to adjust the receiving mirror's height. I can then repeat a quick alignment cycle and hopefully now everything is landing in the center of the target and running true. If not, well, rinse and repeat, because it's time to install the second mirror, same as before. And guess what? That whole alignment cycle repeats again between mirror 2 and mirror 3. For getting the accuracy, I was weirdly fortunate to hit the middle in regards to the left or right positioning. If this wasn't the case, however, I would slide the mirror 2 mount slightly to the left or right, just like I did on the previous axis. The bigger issue here is the up or down movement on this mount to catch the beam. If I was more than a couple of millimeters off, I would recommend sliding the laser tube assembly up or down to change the beam height overall. That's the best and cleanest option, and is exactly what I designed it to do since the mirror on this laser head here doesn't really have any way to adjust for height. My other way, taking into full account my own laziness, because I'm only a millimeter off, I can use some spaces under the mount to lift it up a bit. With that sorted, I can now install the final mirror, mirror 3. This mirror bounces the laser beam downward along the z-axis into whatever it is that we want lasered, and we still need to align it just like we did the others. I'll make a little crosshair target to help, and I'll test the alignment by pulsing the laser with the target up close, and then drop the z-axis bed down and test it again. As before, I'll adjust the angle of the beam by turning the knobs behind the mirror, and the accuracy by moving the position of mirror mount 2 left or right. I can now put the focusing lens into the nozzle. I'm using a 20mm meniscus lens with a focal length of 50.8mm or 2 inches. These are good jack of all trade lenses and do a pretty good job at both engraving and cutting. One thing to check with these is that you're putting the lens in with the convex side facing up. This always feels visually wrong to me but it is what the manufacturer recommends. With the Aerosys running I can pulse the very first test shot through the lens. This should always show as a clean circular dot. It's important to have the beam traveling dead straight down the center of the nozzle. You don't want part of the beam clipping the edge and losing power. Now if this is happening, what you'll notice is a distorted shape instead of a clean dot coming out the end. So the final part of alignment is to check everything is working by getting a nice round dot in all four corners of the laser bed. And at this point, we technically have a functioning laser cutter. So that's it, that's beam alignment. Now I wanted to keep this as a standalone episode just so it's easy to reference. It can be frustrating so I've tried to put in as much detail as I can think of because it might save you some time. Now next episode we'll be doing the enclosure so stick around for that because I think there's going to be a lot of visual progress on the machine which will be really cool to see. Uh, but until then you can catch me on Instagram or spin me a yarn down in the comments. I'll see you on the next one.